Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is for people that are passionate about data engineering. If you are looking to build scalable and robust system, then today's video is just for you. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future video. In today's episode, I'll be walking you through an end to end data engineering project that stitches together several essential technologies like Apache Airflow. Apache Zookeeper, Kafka, Cassandra, and PostgreSQL, all containerized with Docker. So let's dive right in and get started. Let's take a look at the high level view of the system architecture. We start by having an API, which is the random user generator API. This is used for generating random user data. It serves like lorem ipsum, but this is basically for people. All this data is not real, and these are not real people. This is how to use the API, and this is the results that we're expecting from the API itself. So going back to the architecture, we're going to have a DAG in Apache Airflow, which is fetching data from this API intermittently. The data fetch is going to be streamed into Kafka queue. By the way, Apache Airflow with our configuration is going to be running on uh, PostgreSQL. Now the data is that we get from this API is going to be streamed into Kafka, which is sitting on Apache Zookeeper. Now the Zookeeper is the manager to manage all the multiple brokers that we have on Kafka. So if we have multiple brokers, let's say we have um, five or three brokers for Kafka brokers, Zookeeper is going to be the manager. So when one goes down, another one replaces it or it restarts the process itself. Then the data inside the Kafka brokers will be visualized in our control center. The control center serves as a UI where we can see what is going on in our Kafka brokers, the number of uh, messages that are coming into different topics and the de different topics on the Kafka queue. While the schema registry, it provides us a serving layer for the metadata. The schema registry is a RESTful interface for storing and retrieving average schema, which is particularly useful when the Kafka streams uh, is being visualized so we can understand the schema of the records of the data that is coming into Kafka. So the data that we get from Kafka will be streamed with um, Apache Spark. We have a master worker architecture being set up on Apache Spark. When a job is submitted to the master, the master decides which of the worker takes up the job and run the data, uh, run the task. Once the task is run, the task in this case will be to stream data into Cassandra. So we have a listener that is going to be getting data from Kafka into Spark, then streamed directly into Cassandra. All this architecture are running on Docker containers, which we are going to have a single Docker Compose file that helps us to spin up all this uh, architecture. That's the basic architecture we have right now. And we can dive right into the first level, getting data from the random user API with our DAG. I'm going to start by creating a new project called Data Engineering. I'm using Python 3.11, so you can use any Python. I think uh, the minimum version that may be supported should be 3.9. So, but in my case, I'll be using 3.11. In this environment, we have the main, main .py, which we can, we're going to be using this terminal a lot. So it's best to ensure that our terminal is properly set up. I'm going to start by deactivating the current source and I'm going to source it again. I'm going to increase the size of the UI. So it's, it's visible to everybody. So I'm going to have a, my editor, I'm going to have a font. I'm going to increase it to 20. Okay. All right. With this, if I do Python main.py, I Python. Good. So that means the environment is properly set up. And if I check which Python is in my, it's in the right directory. Good. All right. I don't need this main py, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call the folder DAG. Then, because we've activated our VEMV, so we need to install 
the base package that we're going to be using. Pip install, I'm going to install uh, Apache Airflow. Now this is going to initialize the Airflow. So we're going to start from this guy, connected to this API level, and we're going to spin up this uh, instance in a, in a little bit. Now that the installation is done, I'm going to be I'm going to be creating a new file in our DAG, and I'll call it Kafka Stream. This file is going to be where we are going to be running the the DAG from. So I'm going to be importing some packages from Airflow and some internal packages. So from date time, import date time. Then from Airflow, I'm going to be importing DAG. All right. The other thing that I'll be importing from Airflow is the Python operator that I'll be using to fetch this data. Operators.python import Python operator. Now I need a default argument, which is going to be my default args that I'll be using to uh, attached to my DAG itself. So to know who owns the project and some properties that I'll be using. So the owner is going to be, I'm going to just uh, do a scholar. Then the start date is going to be the, the start date. It's going to be date time that I just imported. And that will be 2023, 2023, uh, nine uh three and uh i could just use 10 o'clock it doesn't really matter what time it is all right so this is uh 2023 the august v9 september 3 and then 10 o'clock all right now that i have my default ag so i'm going to create my dag which is going to be where uh where is going to serve as a, as an entry point. So I'm going to have with DAG, which is my DAG, I'm going to call the task ID. Uh, the, the ID is going to be user automation. I'll call it user automation. All right. And my default args, default args is going to be default args. The schedule interval is going to be daily. I'll call this at daily. And there's no need for catch up. So I'll just put catch up post. So this is going to be running as our DAG. I'm going to minimize this for now. Then we are going to have a Python operator. I'm going to call this streaming task. Okay, it's going to be a Python operator and uh, I'll call the task ID uh, stream data from API. Okay, then with Python operator, we need a Python callable, which is going to be the function that we're going to be calling. So I'll call this stream data function. So we don't have it, so we need to create a function. So I'll call this dev stream data. I'm going to be importing JSON because uh, this is going to be what I'll be uh, formatting the re response like uh, as. So what I need to do is I, I need to import request to get the data from uh, request to get the data from the API itself. So I'm going to have uh, request dot get. I'm going to go into the API in here. I'll just copy this URL. I'll paste it in here as my API. There's no other parameters to be set, so it's fine. So what I'll do is I'll go back in here. My request is going to be uh, saved in response. So I'm going to have rest.json. So I'm going to have stream data at this point. So we can test run this before running the, the DAG itself. So rest.json, I'm going to print in this. Okay. So if I run this, on the terminal, I'm going to clear this up. 
and I do Python DAX and I call this Kafka string. So it should get me the data from the API. Uh, yeah, I'm going to comment this out for now. Yeah, I'll just comment that. Okay, and uh, I'll run this again. Okay, good. So I have access to the results from the API. And as expected, we have the result, which is coming in an array of data. And the first record at this point is this guy. The second part is the info. So we only need access to this, um, to the results. And the, this is results and info. We don't need this info for now. We only need this result. And we only need the access to the first record, which is this JSON, the large huge JSON that we have. So to put that in context, we are going to be getting the response somewhere here. And I'm going to put that rest because to rest, I'm going to get the results part of the data and I'll get the first index, which is this guy from here, the first index from that. So if I print this, I'm going to put the, I'm going to print this. Okay. And let's run this again. I have the gender and, uh, I think we can still format this, uh, nicely. Can't we, I think we can do JSON dot dumps. We just dump the J at uh, the response and then we indent it as a uh, maybe three. If we do that, we run this again. I should run this again. We should have something pretty nicely laid out for us. So we have the gender, which is the mail, the location, email, login ID, and all that, which is good. I think this is a good step forward before we continue to ensure that the, uh, each of the tasks is fine. All right. So I have the stream data, but this is not exactly what I want. So what I want is, uh, I'm going to separate this a little bit. So I have get data, get data. So I'm going to move all this guy into this function and I'm going to return at this point, I'm going to return response because this is what I need. I just need to get the API data format it in JSON as the re I get the response in JSON format. And I get the results and the first index of that result. That's what I'm doing with the get data data uh, function. Meanwhile, if I come back in here, I need to uh, put this in in a in a specific format, okay? Because that's what I want to put on my Kafka queue, right? I need to have a format data where I'm going to be formatting this particular data that is coming in. So I'm going to have format data. Right, I'm going to get the response that I get from the API into this function. So I'm going to have a single, uh, I'll, I'll have a variable called function, this object. This is where I'm going to be holding all this data. Okay. Yeah. There's a float. So I can put this uh, somewhere here. Yeah. I'll just uh, put it on the side. And I should be able to see all the data in one go like that. Yeah. So if I have this, I have the gender as a male. And uh, so what I need to do, I need to extract this data. So what I, what I want to do is get the, I'll start with the, the, uh, the first name. So I'm going to have the data first name, which is going to be coming from the name. Uh, let's see, we have the name which is the first and the last name, right? So what I want to do is I want to get a name and I want to get the first name.
rest because to format data and I'll put in rest. And let's see if I, I have the right results. If I run this again, I should have, yeah, it says picture. Yeah, instead of date, I should be rest. Of course, that's a typo. Now we have uh, a more streamlined data, which is more of what we need. We have the first name for this person. And if you look at this data that we have here, if you look at the data, this is the picture of the guy that we have, which is fine. Uh, that's what we need as of this moment. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add Kafka feature to this. But before we do that, we need to set up our Kafka. This is just a, this is just a way for us to get access to this uh, API. So the next thing we are going to do <clears throat> is we're going to set up uh, Apache Airflow on the Docker container. Right now, I just import, inst installed Apache Airflow. It has not been doing anything on my system. So we need to set up a Docker Compose file that is going to be uh, initializing this Apache Airflow and Kafka, the schema registry, and the rest, okay? Now, so what we need to do is we need to, in our files here, I'll just put this back where it's supposed to be, and I'll just uh, minimize this. So I'll just come in here, in our root directory, I'll create a new file. I'll call it Docker file, Docker compose, because that's what we want. We want to, we, 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 we don't need a Docker file really. What we need is a Docker compose so we can just spin up and spin down at any point in time we want. So, which is fine. So I'm going to start with the zookeeper so we can just put in this architecture pretty nicely. So it looks like the dependencies from Apache zookeeper down to the Kafka. Kafka is con uh, connected to the control center, then the schema registry. And this guy is standalone because it's not connected to the Confluence architecture. We're going to be using the Confluence systems here. Then we are going to have a separate system, which is going to be the, Sky, uh, the Apache Spark and a separate system for Cassandra itself. So let's see how that is going to happen. Now, this should prepare our zookeeper ready for operation. So this is basic stuff. And uh, if you need to do some more detailed configuration of the zookeeper, so you, maybe you have some special parameters that you want to, to look into, I think it may be best to consult the documentation. So on the different environment variables and how best to tweak these uh, configurations. But, but for now, this should do for us in our in our case so we're going to have a broker and i'll call the image name this is going to come from confluent inc also and this is going to be cp server so this is going to be our broker uh, if you check the docker up you should see so right now we just ticked off uh, apache zookeeper so the next one we are working on is this kafka uh kafka server So that caps is for uh, our broker itself. So we need to go now for the schema registry. And uh, I think 
for the dependency, the only dependency we have left is the control center. But technically, the control center is dependent on the schema registry because the Avro schemas that this uh, the Avro schema that uh, the schema registry allows the Kafka to visualize on the UI is going to be a it's going to be a dependencies on the schema registry. So technically, this control center is listening for events on schema registry to visualize the data directly on Kafka, which is managed by Zookeeper. So that's the dependency uh, dynamics, anyways. So we just need to add the control center. So we don't have any engines here, but if you look at the images, I already have some images uh, installed already. I already downloaded the the images from uh, from the Confluence uh, Docker Hub. So all I need to do is do Docker Compose up, and I'm uh, doing the dash mode. So this is gonna create. So for some if, you, if this is your first time without these images, what it's going to do is going to pull those images down to your system. But because I already done that, so that's why you're not seeing the pulling. So it's, it's I already have the images and it's going to just spin up the containers from those images directly. So now, this is what I was talking about the other time. Zookeeper, it is only when it was LD that the broker started. And you can see these guys are still created, waiting for the broker to be healthy before it continues. If you look at the UI, they are not they are not started. Now that this guy is uh, is running, is because the broker says that it is ready to accept connection. So yeah, so that's the dependency level until one is done before the other uh, continues. So if there's any error at this point, we we need to check to be sure that the environment is ready and uh, ready to accept connection before we continue. So we can fix any error and uh, continue. So we have the schema registry. Uh, I think it's going to take the most time because it's, uh, I think it's 30 seconds. Is it not? Yeah, it's 30 seconds. So it's going to be checking every 30 seconds. And the timeout is 10 seconds. Maybe I should have reduced that. But right now, this, uh, let's see. These are warnings. It should be fine. I'm waiting for, yeah. The schema registry is okay now. And the control center is coming up. So which is okay. Uh, the control center also is started, which is fine. I, I think uh, at this point, uh, we are done with this part. We only need to confirm on the UI that the environment is up and running and that it's ready to accept connections. So what we need to do is we just click on this guy or we go to localhost 9021. I think we are a little bit early, so let's check. Yeah, the control center is still starting up. We just wait till it's done. It says started network server and this is ready. Okay, so if we refresh this page, we should be good. Now, this is our control center. So the importance of those connections that we did uh, is to be sure that we have uh, the right brokers and we can visualize the, uh, the data. Right now, we don't need any uh, connections to KSQL DB or connect, which is fine. Uh, we may do that in the next, in a different tutorial, but not in this tutorial. We're, we're good with the KSQL DB and the rest. But let's focus on the broker, which is the most important thing here. And then we can see the topics and the production and consumption. So if we go in here, we have the UI, the broker, the topics, the connect, we don't have anything there. And if you look at the brokers, these are the, this is what has been produced. Uh, uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, few seconds, which is twenty four kilobytes and twenty four bytes per second, and the rest. So this is uh, and the zookeeper is connected. 
you can see the zookeeper is connected um self balancing is on yeah and the rest is fine so we only have we have a good broker name in here the bytes in bytes out and the rest and these are the other properties so what we really uh want is this topic as of this moment we don't have any uh, topics created yet so we don't need to create anything we we do that automatically by the time we start publishing data into it so let's continue so that's the first uh this the second part anyways so if we connect to on our kafka stream if you go back to our kafka stream at this point which is what we have so we need to connect to the kafka queue so we can see we we'll just uh, maybe publish one or two data into the kafka queue and we we'll see if it is working or not so we need to install a package for that uh, which is going to be pip install kafka python by the time we get this data from uh the random user of me api we format the data right which is here and now we are dumping the data so we don't need to dump it for now we just uh go ahead and publish this data so we come in here i'm going to import kafka uh i mean from kafka uh, import kafka uh producer uh and i think i need to import the time because what we want to do is we want to be producing to up to a certain number of time then we stop producing so uh let's see uh, i just want to send a single data to the producer so let's initialize the producer at this point so we have a producer to be kafka producer the bootstrap server bootstrap servers it's going to be we are connecting to the broker uh, on 2902 however because we are not yet on the on the uh, docker containers of this time we need to use the uh the external ip address which is the local host and the port 9092 uh i think we should set the max timeout the max block uh ms which is the timeout it's going to be c5 seconds all right Okay, so let's publish and push the data that we get from this guy. We push it to the queue. So we have producer.send. Uh, we have users created. And we do a json.dumps. We just dump the data and then code it in UTF. UTF, it's encoding uh not data it's rest yeah okay i think this should get us uh data to the queue let's see i'm going to do a python kafka stream.py so let's see if it is able to push data to the queue are we able to connect to the queue it says let's see connecting to this guy probing this connecting connection complete so we are able to connect and push data so we come back into the call in the to the topic and we refresh excellent so we have a users created and we have data on the queue but right now because we're not listening to this we, we can't see anything so if we run this again if we run this again we should see new messages coming in Let's see. Good. So this is the data that is coming in. Ontas Creek guy. The first name is Wyatt Willis, Ontas Creek, Australia, and the rest. Uh, if you look at this guy, uh, we didn't print it out. Anyways, but that's the data that is coming in. So we are able to push the data to the queue, and that's a good win for us. So the next thing for is to set up. So we have we have the we have the zookeeper connected to kafka successfully uh we are able to use the schema registry avro schema to visualize the data on the topic which is fine so this part of the system is good now we need to push data from airflow to postgres i mean from airflow 
to Kafka, not Postgres. So what we need to do now is initialize our workflow, uh, our airflow with Postgres server. So we just come back in here just to reduce the, the workload. Uh, so we come back to our PyCharm. Okay. In here, we come back to our Docker Compose. Just minimize this for now. Uh, right now, we need to add our <clears throat> we need to add our web server. And that's it. So the final thing we need to do before we spin this up is to add our script for the entry point. So we need to have a directory called a script. In our script, we're going to have entry point .sh. And in this entry point .sh, what we want to do is we want to write the sequence of command that Airflow should follow when it's trying to initialize the web server or the scheduler itself. So we need to have a a beam bash. This is our entry point of SH, so we need to add that to our startup volume, which is going to be inside the script entry point SH. To be synchronized into OPT flow is it scripts entry point sh and the entry point file is going to be pointing to OPT flow scripts entry point it's not scripts it's scripts entry point sh yeah. And uh, because we are connecting to Postgres, we need to set up our Postgres. Because right now, what we are doing basically is to uh, alchemy. It's alchemy. Yeah. It's Kirill alchemy. And I think this is usually double underscore. Airflow double underscore that. Yeah. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, sequential yeah i think this should be fine and the last part is going to be the it's going to be the uh, postgres which is uh where is it yeah yeah i need to just initialize the postgres which is uh postgres so what is on the same network one other thing that is left is the scheduler which is not initialized right now. So what we need to do is to write a simple script for the scheduler. We are going to have a scheduler. So let's see if there's any error so we can quickly debug and continue our coding. The web server is running and let's see if it is working as expected. Okay, good. Uh, it loaded the, the requirement, uh, requirements TXT and it's running it at this point, which is good. I think this, this shows that, uh, environment is properly set up and the data is uh, running as expected. Good. So our web server is running at 8080. So the web server is running. I think what we said in our Docker Compose was to be checking every, <clears throat> every 30 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be checking every 30 seconds. So even though it's ready, uh, we just need to wait for like 30 seconds before this guy picks up. And while that is, while, while that is running, I think we can go into our local host and go into 8080 and see if our airflow is properly set up so airflow is running 
and uh, we have our admin which is our admin admin we're signing we should be able to so yes good the airflow is uh i mean is running as expected but there is no scheduler even though we are using a sequential executor which is not advisable for production because it's going to be running your task one after the other if you want to run tasks in parallel and uh, in a more scalable way uh you shouldn't use this you should use something like a salary executor or something like that so what is happening web server is on lv just come this and the scheduler should be off right the scheduler is also up and it's uh starting so it's doing the same installation because we need to install airflow on the scheduler too so let's see if it is uh, also going to be running as expected so while this is uh, the installation is going on so we don't waste too much time we just proceed to our kafka stream and we we fine tune this and we can set up our dag so we can start seeing some stuff and movement on the ui so i uh, come back in here i minimize this uh so i have this guy and uh, i just uncomment this i i don't need the stream data i know it's working i can see some data push to the queue and this is my data at this point yeah however we need to fine tune this now that this guy will be running on the on the docker instance so we need to change this these are broker and then it's going to be a uh, broker 2902 to use the internal ip address <clears throat> i'm going to take a quick pause for the scheduler to be done and then i'll resume once it is done now that the scheduler is, uh, has do is done initializing, I think the next thing for us to do is to check uh, the UI at this point. So let's see if the UI is going to be updated. So we just need to refresh. Now, the, error me the warning message is gone and we can see our user automation DAG. And that's a good one. So now that we have our user automation DAG, we can see if the the grid is initialized properly good so we have stream data from api which is good so the next thing we want to do is we want to switch the um we want to make sure that we are able to stream data directly from the random user api directly into kafka uh, as much as possible so instead of uh, just one producing that we're doing we want to be producing all the data that are going to be sent from random user into kafka directly so we just need to modify this particular uh, this particular script <clears throat> this function will be updated so we have the get data format data we are sending data to kafka at this point now so instead of just this part we need to move the kafka producer maybe up in here and then we just do a while here so we have we've imported time so what we want to do is we want to finish that part which is if time time uh, we need to get the current time So we just uh, update this every time. Well done. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to stream for like two minutes or even five minutes or six, one minute. I think we're going to be producing rapidly. So what we want to do is we want to get the current time. We just break this loop. Otherwise, if it is uh, not greater than one minute what we want to do is we want to get the data from here so we want to move this guy from here to this place so we want to get the data format it and then 
Uh, maybe we just uh, produce it. Uh, we have the script down here. So we just move this up. So what we are doing here is while the time is between one minute. So while we are producing within uh, from zero to 60 seconds, what I want to do is we want to as many times as possible send requests to random user.me API, get the data, format that data, and send it to the, to the queue itself. So we just have an exception, sorry, accept uh, exception as E, and then we just log that, we just import login. So we just uh, log that part, just login. If I can only spell login, <laughs> an error occurred. And the error is the error is E. Okay. And what we want to do is uh, we want to continue. So even if uh, maybe there is a network downtime for like a two, for the two seconds or 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. We just log that particular error and continue the loop. And once it is one minute, we break. That's what we want to do. So that's, uh, that's that uh, with this uh, adjustment at this point. So what we want to do is we want to go back to the UI, refresh and trigger the DAG from the UI. Yeah, it's done. So what we can do is we trigger this. We just turn it on. Yeah, okay, so it's not triggering automatically because we didn't enable catch up. So I just turn it on. I just triggered it and I just trigger user automation should uh, start any moment now. Do we have anything in the logs? I don't think so. So but let's let's follow the production on the the Kafka UI. I'm going to just refresh this page. Okay, so we are listening for new events on the on the UI. Just waiting for this to get triggered. Okay, so it's running now. We should start seeing data dropping. Good. So data is dropping on the UI and there's going to keep dropping for at least one minute. Uh, we can trigger the the list uh, from here. And you can see the, the offset number and the data that are coming in. Anyways, good. So while this is going on, so that means uh, at this point, all our data is fine. So we want to write the, uh, we'll check our UI. So we've taken care of this part and we've taken care of the architecture. So we want to set up the Spark architecture and the Cassandra, uh, which are the other parts that is left that are left. So we have the master work architecture uh, for this, uh, for the purpose of this session, I will just use one uh, worker and I'll show you how to add the other workers if you want to add them. And then we'll go from there. We'll just go back to our Docker Compose. In here, I'll just copy paste the master work architecture and I'll just talk through them. So here is the master work architecture and uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly talk through them. So the Spark master is coming from the Spark latest. So the command to start this master is to go into the bin Spark class and deploy the master. So it's going to expose this on the port of 9090 and it's going to have another port of 7077. So this is where the master will be communicating with the workers themselves. So if you have multiple workers, they'll be communicating on 7077. 70, 70, 70, 70 with the master, while if you want to access the UI, we use uh, port 1990. Of course, the, they have to be on the same network so they can work correctly. For the worker, so if you have multiple worker, we just we replicate this, okay? We replicate this as one and then we copy, let me show you. So if I copy this, I'll just change the name from 
uh, spark worker i'll just add maybe spark worker 2 somewhere something like this and uh, they have the same uh, uh, configuration but the dependency that it, uh, they have against the master is going to be the same same spark class but instead of the master uh, it's going to be instead of the master here all of them are going to have worker so if you have more, more than one work, worker you can just um, have a, the same class for them but communicating with the master on the same port uh, the the same container name and the port so yeah that's how to add multiple workers but uh, for the for the sake of uh, the speed i'm going to just leave it at one and also uh, these are the environment variable for the um for the worker so we need to have two cores and the minimum of one gig so if you reduce this one gig to maybe something like 500 you are going to have an error usually you have a minimum of one gig for the worker because they are doing the most of the work and yeah so I, I tested this with something less than one gig and i was having an error so it's, i think it's best to have a minimum of one gig so you can also check the documentation for more information on that yeah now for the cassandra db we have a we are going to be using the latest the cassandra so the container name and the host name are the same we're expo exposing that on 94.2 the maximum if size is 512 and the rest so the username and password is cassandra cassandra so this is going to create mount a volume locally called cassandra because of the host name it's going to mount it and this if you want to get any data into cassandra you can do that through that point it's not necessary we, we don't need any volume really and that's it they have to be running on the same network so if we do a docker compose up now we should have a docker compose of detach we should have it says must be a string postgres network must be a string let's see services postgres services yeah we don't need this it was added when i mistakenly pressed enter the other time all right so cassandra is running and uh, if you look at this we have a uh, if you do docker ps uh, we have we have the zookeeper reg schema registry let's see we have the scheduler yeah we have the spark worker which is started and we have cassandra the spark master yeah so the spark master and the worker i hope now if any data engineering i'm going to create a new file call it spark stream dot py all right with the spark stream dot py this is where we are going to be writing our um, our code for for spark streaming now we have all the other dependencies uh, working so what we will need to do is we, want, we need to install the cassandra uh, that driver so I'm um, PySpark as well. So we do a pip uh, pip install Cassandra driver so we can communicate with Cassandra. And then we just need to do the other installation we need to do is the Spark and PySpark. So we need to install PySpark and PySpark uh, dependencies. While PySpark and Spark are installing, I'm going to continue coding while we wait for the installation to be done. All right, so now that all of the dependencies are done, are down, I think we can continue SQL. So we are importing Spark uh, session. And we, from this same package, we are going to be importing from functions we're going to be importing uh from json and then color so at least we start with those ones for now so what we want to do is we want to uh create 
a key space on Cassandra before we, we do anything. Because a key space is like a schema. If for people that know uh, uh, SQL, uh, Postgres, and the rest, it's just like your public, you need to have a key space. And then in each key space, you have uh, multiple tables. All right. So we are doing a create key space. It's going to be done with a session. I'll just put a pause in here. So we, we create a key space. Yeah. But we need to create a connection. So dev create a table with a session. So we are going to be creating uh, a table here. And then we need to uh, insert the data that we, we are fetching from Kafka. Insert data. So we are going to be getting the session, of course, and then uh, quags, which is, uh, then we do the insertion here. And then we establish, we need to establish connection with the uh, Kafka, Spark, and Cassandra. So we need to, uh, so let's say create, create Spark connection here. And then, we are going to be creating Spark connection. Create a Cassandra connection. Okay. And then we'll be creating Cassandra connection. All right. So let's start implementing this and then we work our way up. So once we have a connection to Cassandra from there, we create a connection to Spark, and then we create uh, the key space, the table, and the rest. So let's start with the main function. So if the name equals to main, all right. So we are going to have a Spark connection, which is going to be uh, create Spark connection. We are going to write the implementation shortly, and then in the create spark connection so what we want to do is we want to create an we want to establish connection with um, spark which is going to be uh, a try uh, we're going to have a uh, say scan going to be spark session so we build we, we we connect the builder and then instead of just get get or create i think we're still going to need this a little bit and then we're going to have uh, the application name so I'll say Spark Data Streaming. And we can have two dots in here, can we? Uh, we just have uh, the config. This is where uh, things get very interesting. So with Spark, we need to specify the Java file that will be used. So I'm going to be using some packages in here. So two jars will be used to one that will be used to create connection with Spark, the other one with Cassandra and Kafka. Rather. So we have uh, com dot data data stacks dot Spark and uh, Spark Cassandra uh, connector. However, if you want to get access to them, I think we can come into Maven repository. And we can search for a uh, Spark. Uh, this is Maven repository. Maven repository. We can have a uh, Cassandra connector. Okay. I think we need to have Spark Cassandra connector. So from com data stacks, we have a connector from here. So if you don't have it, I think you might need to download. So the latest one is 3.41, which I think is what we'll be using. So it's, it's just the latest release. So what we need to do is we need to reference this correctly. Uh, we have Spark Data Connector. We need to get the scalar version, and then we, we get the, the version that we'll be using. All right. So going back to the code, we are going to connect with the uh, Spark Cassandra connector, uh, the 2.13 version 3.41, and the other part, which is going to be, or oh, the other one, which is going to be the SQL Kafka, SQL Kafka connector. 
Spock, let's see what Kafka. Yeah, for this one. We have a, this is for structure swim, streaming, okay? So we have a 3.41, 2.132. So if you look at this guy, we have access to it and you can download the Java file here, include it in your price pack um, repo, uh, repository in the list of jars there and you should have access to this. So um, this is the module, which is uh, Spark SQL Kafka 010213. All right, so going back to the code here, yeah, I'm going to have um, org.apache.spark and I'm going to have Spark SQL Kafka 010-2.13341. Okay. 2.13. 010 okay 2.13341 yeah so this is the those are these are the two packages will be uh two java files will be needed okay so the next one is uh we just need to configure the the host name for cassandra which is going to be spark dot cassandra dot connection dot host and we are going to be putting that as local host. All right. And, and that's it. This should establish a connection for us because we are going to be running this on Docker. So this is going to be a broker. But if you want to test this locally, we do a local host for now. All right. So this should give us access to to spark all right and then we just do accept exception as a p we just log the arrow uh we couldn't uh because i just that couldn't create a spark connection maybe session due to exception Okay, and uh, we just ask the the error as argument there. So with this, we should be able to establish a, a connection. All right, and at this point, we just do uh, scon dot spark context the set log level to be. I think I'll just do error. Again, the info spark connection created successfully. And at the end of the day, we just return SCO. All right. So basically, this is going to create a, a spark connection for us. So again, to go through what we've just done, we are creating a spark session with this name. All right, and then we are using these Java packages in this uh, connection, which is going to be the 2.13 for the Spark Cassandra connector. And the other part is going to be Spark SQL Kafka. So this creates a, a connection for us on the, yeah, okay. I think just to ask on goes to none. Yeah. So this creates a connection for us. So the next thing we want to do is we want to establish connection to, to Cassandra. So now in here where we are establishing, once we've established a, a Spark connection, the next thing for us is to establish a connection to uh, Cassandra. So we do that with um, cluster. So we just do cluster. I think we can have a cluster in here which has which has been imported uh we connect to localhost cluster all right and uh, this is going to be the uh yeah connecting to the cluster to cassandra cluster all right we're going to have a session 
being created from the cluster we have cluster.connect so this is going to generate a session for us and with this session we can return session uh i think we should do a try catch here accept exception as a e and login the error could not create cassandra connection due to e yeah i'm going to do the session here just to none and yeah so once we do that if our session if spark con is not known then we continue okay then if that is known i think if it is not known then we, we establish a connection to our cassandra connection at this point so we just do uh this is going to be our our session okay i'm going to move this up here I just return on. Okay. All right. Uh, this is shadowing the name outside. Uh, just call this uh, Cassandra session. Okay. So if we have a connection, we return it. If, we, if not, we return this. So, so if uh, session is not is not i think we just break the connection we just return uh, there's no need to continue at this point i think we just do nothing uh i think <clears throat> oh instead of that we just do if it is not known so we only enter that if this is not known. So what we want to do is we want to create a key space, okay, with the session that we have. And then we want to create a table with our session. Uh, for the key space, we just come in here, we do a session.execute. So even if we run this multiple time, because we added this command, if it, if it does not exist, it only runs once. So we do the same for table. Now to insert the data into uh, into the queue uh, into Cassandra, we are going to extract the uh, data from the quags. All right, so this gives us access to uh, the data from there, and then we can try to insert it now. It's going to be session.execute. Then the last bit is uh, the only thing we need to do is uh, we need to connect to Kafka so we can extract those information from Kafka. So the last part, I think, is going to be uh, the, uh, I think we need to connect to, to Kafka. So we, we are using the Spark connection. So 
we are going to have a spark df So the Spark, uh, basically what we're doing here is we are connecting to the Spark. Uh, we're using Spark connection to read data from Kafka on this, uh, on this uh, server with uh, the user's created topic. And we're starting from the beginning, load it, and we're returning that data frame from there. So I think uh, that's what we're doing at that point. Uh, let's see what's the... Yeah, of course, uh, I think it's just the, the spacing. Yeah, I think that's those are spacing issues. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So when we create the Cassandra connection, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all. So I think we can test this out. uh once we connect to kafka so we need to get the data frame from there so when we connect it to spark here we need to get the data frame so i'm going to call this uh df and we connect to kafka which is spark connection so connect to kafka with Spark connection. This is where we are creating, create Spark connection. All right, and then this is uh, pretty much descriptive. And uh, we create a key space, create a table. So instead of inserting directly, I think we need to write, do a stream. So we're not doing it just once, we are doing it uh, in stream. So we just have a, a streaming query at this point, which is going to be, I, I think we need to select the data and do selection DF. It's going to be, uh, uh, I think we need to have a function because once we have this data frame, we need to structure it in a way to insert into Cassandra, okay? And the way to do that is to have a, a struct fields, which is going to be uh, create a selection data frame from Kafka. Okay, and then we have a Spark data frame. So this is going to, we need a schema at this point, which is going to have a, a struct type. A struct type. So what we're doing basically is to create a schema. So when we read data from the Spark data frame, we are converting whatever we read into this particular schema, and then we are selecting data from it. We are selecting everything from that uh, column. So if you have, uh, let's say, 100, 1,000, 1 million records, whatever, it's going to select all of them from the Kafka queue. Right? Once it selects them, even if it is just one record, select them and format it in this particular schema and select the data from it to be inserted so we just need to do a selection data frame which is going to be a create selection data frame from kafka and then we're using the spark data frame which is the df that we get we got from here yeah we're using that and uh, yeah, so we just need to, to get our selection data frame and do a write stream from that in the format of where we are writing to org.apache.spark.sql.cassandra. 
option the check we need to have a checkpoint location this is not necessary this is not important uh it's not compulsory but it's just to have a checkpoint in case of failure and i'll just have a other option we can have a key space option the key space is going to be spark string I think I should just put everything in it. Yeah, so we don't have to have uh, just have option the table is gonna be created users. And the last thing we need to do is start the streaming. Yeah. And that's all we need to do. Um so we can just do streaming. But our wait termination. There are some examples here. Uh, this one, Apache Spark. And you can see everything that I wrote in there is somewhere here. So if you have multiple brokers, you do something like that. Yeah. So everything is like that. So you can just uh, maybe come in here, do a copy paste and all that. But yeah, that's where, this is where I got most of the code from. And I'm just uh, replicating that. The, on the code yeah so let's 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 pin back our uh, docker containers and then detach them i think we we have uh, an error somewhere here i know yeah it's a comma any other errors can see one other red. Yeah, it's just uh, it's it's fine. This is a public uh, uh the key space name, so it's fine. You couldn't recognize it, so it's okay. Yeah, I think while we wait for that to come up, that's all we need to do. All right, now that the installation is done. Our web server is back up and running and uh, our scheduler is back. It's also up and running. Let's see. Scheduler is also listening. Uh, also, we, we need to see why our control center has gone down. I think we just need to start it up. There's really no need. Uh, we don't need the control center at this point because we know that our data will always be produced and we, we don't need to visualize them anymore. Even we don't need the schema registry anymore because that's connected to the control center. So we only need the 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 Kafka, which is our, our broker, to be up, and uh, that we are able to connect to it. So let's see if our web server is up and running. I guess it is. We just do admin, admin, we sign in. And uh, we just go in here to see the the DAG, and we have it stream data from API. Good. So what we need to do is we we need to uh, check our Cassandra if our Cassandra is up and running. Uh, but we need to do uh, a run of this Spark stream to see if we are able to even connect to to spark stream at all so it's going to run at the entry points here and try to establish a connection okay so i think with these uh, dependencies because i don't have them before these two guys uh, I think it should download them. So it says the artifact does not exist on resolve dependencies. You couldn't see Cassandra connector 213, uh, 314. Let's see. Cassandra connector. So let's go into Maven. Maven repository. Spark Cassandra connector. 213341. Oh, it's 3.4.1. Yeah. 
because that's it uh, we just need to rerun this and i think yeah with this it's uh let's see if we're able to connect to it this is the server error mismatched in pt and the file so when it was establishing a connection uh trying to execute yeah i didn't close this uh i didn't close that uh this uh this bracket i think did i do the same for the key space yeah the key space is fine it's only the table so i need to just rerun that all right so we are able to create a key space Let's see, we're able to create a key space and we're able to create a key, uh, a table. So the only thing that is left is that uh, it's, uh, it says uh, an error call while publishing this due to data stacks the login. So there are, there are two ways to this. So we need to, uh, when it, it was starting the, the stream, so we need to go into, um, because we are using this uh this uh jav files in here we need to add a dependency if you look at our vmv in our bin i think no i think in the libs in the libs and you check uh pi spark we need to download those uh pi spark we need to download those java files in there if you look at the jars in here we need to find uh, Spark SQL, and we we can find them here. Okay, so we need to add them to this. I think I already did the download, so I'm going to copy paste them. And uh, while I do that, we can do uh, we can go into the Cassandra and uh, check. So we we go into the Cassandra, and then we have the interactive uh, terminal with the use uh, this is the terminal uh, this is the container name and we're going into sql sh with the username of cassandra password of cassandra uh, the local host is uh, is the ip uh, is the ip and then this is the port so if you exit uh, if you go into that we have access to the sql sh and we can do uh, a describe spark streams dot created users and we have uh, the created users aside the uuid and the rest and these are the details of the data that we have so if we do a select star from spark streams created users we have an id address and the rest of the data which is good so we have access to uh, to cassandra data directly so all we need to do now is by the time we are streaming data from uh, Kafka, we need to push this data to Cassandra. So the only dependencies that we, we need to add are those Java files, which we need to download. For now, I will just exit and do a Docker Compose down to remove all these existing images. Then we continue from there. I already copied the Java files. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy paste them into the JAWS directory so we can have a dependencies on them uh it's asking me to click okay yeah i just copied them so the two java files have been copied and uh, you can see them there one is the spark cassandra connector and then the other one is spark sql kafka connector What we need to do now is start up the Docker Compose. Now we do Docker Compose up, detached, and we can start up the Docker Compose. The containers are starting up, and you can see that uh, our web server is having an error. What's the error? I suppose that might be the entry point, but let's see. Uh, web server, if you click on that, 
we scroll to the bottom and uh, yeah I suspected uh command not found m so if we go back to entry points uh we have uh, an m when i'm trying to install upgrade uh, pip i'll just delete that and um, try again i guess it's going to start the web server and then we can check again i just clear this yeah okay i think it's starting up so if you go outside of here we need to stop the control center and uh, the schema registry so once we stop the schema registry the control center is not going to be coming up because of the dependence anyways so the next thing we need to do is we need to go to the ui and check our spark the status of our spark session so going back to the ui we go to localhost 1990 just refresh this yeah and you can see our spark master the ip address which is the localhost really is just the ip address of the docker container itself that is running it so we have the worker id you have there's no running application no completed application and you can see that so we go back and then we submit a job our first job to that but before we do that i think we need to comment out the streaming part of the the spark system where we are streaming into cassandra for now i'll just comment these two out yeah then we can try we want to see whether the key space on the table will be automatically created if we do a refresh on the ui yeah okay so we can see the id the id is uh and the name is packed data streaming it's been running for 14 seconds so if you click on the the application you can see the worker that is running it and uh, the worker id the number of calls the memory and the rest so going back to the terminal we can see the key space successfully created and table created successfully but is the connection yeah the connection is says is saying an error. What's going on? Let's look into the Docker container. Uh, so I think we just need to do Docker exec it to see what is going on in there. I think the script is fine. I'll just do Docker exec and check it. And I'll do a select star from there. Take a spark. Yeah, I think it's fine. We just exit that. Uh, we'll resubmit the job and check again if it is fine or not. Okay. I think it's coming back up. Yeah, let's check. Can we see any error? It says successfully started the service. Connecting to master. Yeah, I think I think it's successfully con uh, connected. And if you look at the data frame that we created, which is the structure into Spark, which is fine, and uh, Cassandra is fine. The data frame is okay. And uh, yeah, I think we are good, really. Right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to submit the job and enable the streaming to cassandra so if we refresh this check the ui and refresh i'll just delete this and go to the 1990 uh, refresh this part i think we need to log in because we already spinned down from right okay we don't i'll click on that uh, okay let's start it trigger that So it's coming up now that the key space and the table has been created we can comment this part and resubmit the job so i added uh, login info so we can see when the streaming is being started and you can see the key space and the table has been created i added this part and um, so what, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be submitting this job back to uh, apache spark then simultaneously we're going to trigger the dark 
so we can start seeing the data that is being produced to Kafka queue. And this is the last one that was uh, running. So I'm going to retrigger this so we have a, a second run. And once that is done, we we check, we do a double check on the on Cassandra to see if we are getting streams of data into Cassandra. But right now, <clears throat> right now, we need to get the data into Kafka first by triggering this DAG, which is currently running. Then we go from there into, into Cassandra. I'm going to open a new terminal where I'll be doing an execution into the terminal of Cassandra. So I'm going to do a Docker exec uh, dash IT into Cassandra. And I'm going to be running the SQL statement that we're going to be using. So this, the producing is done when we trigger the jug. So the next thing we need to do is check. Uh, I'll just uh, do select star from there. Select star from, uh, that will be, is a spark streams dot uh, created users. Yeah. And you can see we have uh, initially 59 rows. Uh, if we go in there and do a select star from, I'm going to just select the first name and the last name so we can, I think it's uh, a little bit more. So I'll just do select first name and uh, last name from, from Sparkstream to created users. And you can see the username and password, uh, the first name and the last name of the users that have been streamed into Cassandra. So basically that's how to do it. And uh, if we trigger more, we see more records. And uh, yeah, that kind of caps it all. Basically, I think we've satisfied all the items on our architecture. We have the API and uh, from API to Cassandra, we started with the Apache Airflow, which is coming, pulling the data from the API. And once we trigger that process, it streams data into Kafka, then to Apache Spark, then into Cassandra. And there you have it, folks. An end-to-end -end data engineering pipeline from data ingestion to processing and storage, all containerized with Docker. If you find this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, happy engineering.